Sandrowski? Here. Lucy Nolan Dover? Here. Bob Pennell? Present. Genevieve Brownsack? Here. Craig Sims? Here. Chris Dilber? Here. And Rachel Woodson is present. Thank you. Um, public hearings, we have none. Approval of the agenda. I just want to make one change to new business. Um, Redwood Living uh, preliminary segment. Motion to accept the agenda agenda with correction. Second. All in favor? Aye. Is there any opposed? Motion carried. Um, public comments on uh, agenda items. Uh, approval of the minutes. Meeting minutes from August 1st, 2023. Did everybody get those? Motion. Motion to approve the <coughs> Planning Commission public hearing minutes of August 1st, 2023. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. And a regular meeting minutes of August 1st, 2023. So moved. Support. All in favor? Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Motion carried. Okay, communication correspondence and workshop, we have none. Matters for consideration, uh, which is our only item tonight, is the Redwood Living um, Apartments, multi-family, um, site, uh, preliminary site plan review on Rizal, Health, and the Lane Street, parcel 0633 multifamily development, and we have representation here from uh, Redwood Living, uh, Ian and Emily, and we'll start with you. Our engineer isn't here yet, so he's seen your presentation. Is it the same one, I assume, that he's already seen? Generally, I mean, oh. And then we'll carry on. He, he'll be here shortly, so we'll carry on with the rest from there. Okay. Are you good? Yes. I need to state my name and address for the record. Just your name. Just my name. Okay. Hi. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Emily Inglehart. I'm here with Redwood Apartment Neighborhoods. Um, my colleague, Ian Graham, from Collier's Engineering and Design. Uh, maybe I turned it on and then just subsequently turned it off. We'll see. Uh, I'd probably give this presentation without uh, the slides, but Uh, we build single-story, low-density apartment neighborhoods. We've 
got over 15,000, nearing in on 16,000 units um, that we've owned and managed since 1991. Our portfolio wide, we're 98 percent lease. We find that uh, it's a very popular product. It's something that's missing for the market. A lot of communities are finding this missing middle housing uh, that, that people are looking for, uh, especially in the snow belt. The attached to guard garage is really a, a, a feature for folks, and um, it's been a very successful uh, product, as you can see with our growth. Um, we offer 24-7 on-site professional management, and we go through the entitlements, we build, we own, and we manage. So, you know, we're building to keep these in our portfolio. We've been in business since 1991, so, you know, we have a long history of, of, of building and owning regular neighborhoods. Uh, who are our residents? We, uh, we will rent to anyone who qualifies. We're not an age-restricted developer. Um, but we find that a lot of our product appeals to empty nesters, seniors, young professionals, uh, folks who are looking to rent by choice. We're looking for folks who are, are choosing that, whether it's they're building a home and they're waiting for their home to be finished. You know, they don't want the maintenance of their single family home. They don't want, uh, you know, they want to follow their kids to wherever they're going in California or Texas or something in a couple of years, um, but they don't want to own and sell a condo. So we provide just a different type of lifestyle with the feeling of living like a home. Um, we are projecting, rents are kind of crazy right now, but around $2,000 in rent. So we're a very high rent product. Uh, we um, offer a lot of the amenities of a home, but you know, it equates to a mortgage payment of a pretty sizable house, so um, our folks are often coming from single-family homes. Uh, we, uh, folks who want maintenance-free lifestyle, we handle the landscaping, the snow, if there's a light bulb that needs to be changed in your um, apartment home, if you have too heavy of a package to carry in, help getting your trash to the curb, um, you know, we strive to provide those types of services to make it really a uh, turnkey living. Um, we find that often the folks that move to our new redwood neighborhoods are already living in the communities. Uh, they are just looking for this type of home. They haven't been able to uh, find somewhere else to go. And so, um, you know, we find a lot of our data that the residents come from three, five miles away. Um, we require a background check and a credit check to rent. So we sell, uh, we rent peace and quiet. We, we really strive to have a safe, controlled uh, neighborhood. So we really, try to keep uh, great tenants there. Um, and nearby, you probably have seen us around. We have neighborhoods in Washington Township on 26 and Hayes, on Macomb on 22 and North, uh, Shelby Township just behind kind of Costco there on Lakeside Boulevard, and then we're under construction in Chesterfield Township on 23 Mile Road next to the world's best customer. So, hello. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, these are just a couple pieces of data about our neighborhoods. Again, it's about 800 units old. <laughs> but um, on average, again, we, we look at our portfolio. The average age of our residents are 51, almost 51, 70% um, empty nesters, you know, less than two people per home, less than two cars per home, usually not a lot of uh, school-age children. Again, it depends on you know, where we're located, and again, we'll rent to anyone, but with two, only two bedrooms, it's, it's typically not a lot of uh, children in the school system. But, uh, and our residents stay a little bit longer than other apartments, uh, you know, some over five years, the average stay is over two years, so, you know, folks do like to move in and stay, uh, we find, so. Uh, this is just some information about what we do, what we look for um, when we go through a background check, we run credit check, rental history, civil judgments. Everyone who's over 18 uh, has to be a leaseholder. So, um, you know, we don't have sub-leasing or anything like that. Everyone has to, uh, who's an adult, will be on the Redwood lease. Uh, this is just a little bit of information. We started in Ohio in the Independence Cleveland area and grew from there. Um, we jumped into Michigan around 2010, 2012. I think our first neighborhood opened. Um, and our first one is in Orion Township, Michigan, kind of 
uh, over by Great Lakes Crossing. And we've grown uh, very exponentially, as you can see, we have 32 neighborhoods in Michigan with uh, many in process. Um, we have an office in Bingham Farms, where I work. <laughs> and um, the nearest neighborhoods I mentioned, I think only new one on that list is in Rochester Hills. Um, and then overall, we're you know, in the Midwest, as you can see, a lot of the snow belt states and uh, actively working. We have a large growth plan and uh, continue to want to grow. Um, just some information. When we look at a site, we want to make sure we're successful. So we do look at a lot of factors to make sure uh, that our operations team feels that you know we will be able to achieve the rents that we project, that we have enough demand, that you know it's, it's the right community for Redwood and that Redwood you know, we feel is right for the community. So uh, just some information. Uh, so what do we build? Um, again, I went through that two bedroom, two bathroom open floor plan. Each uh, each home uh, has an attached two car garage. Um, with a direct entry right into usually the kitchen. No one looks above you. Um, we do landscaping, uh, stone and shake accents, vaulted ceilings. Each unit has personal outdoor space, whether that's a patio in the back, a screened in porch, um, or different kind of options like that. Um, private, we like to do private streets, um, and again, the high service, low maintenance lifestyle. So here's just some rendering and photos of typical units that we build. You can see these driving around, but um, these are kind of our bread and butter units. They're the most popular floor plan that we lease. They're forest wood and meadow wood. They're 13, about 1,300 square feet. Um, I think our forest wood is our smallest at 1,294, and then our largest unit is the Cape Wood, which you'll see, which is just over 1,600 square feet. Um, as you'll notice, they vary in color. We try to do that so you know, when you're going down, we want it to feel like an egg, but you know, I live in the red house or the tan house or whatever. So um, try to keep that neighborhood scale. Uh, this is another popular floor plan. This is our Willowwood. It's a uh, wider, less deep unit. Um, this is a project, uh, the photo is a project. I just took this picture last, a couple weeks ago, I guess it was last month, but um, in uh, the Lansing area. Uh, and this is the Cakewood unit that I mentioned. This has a sunroom to it, so you know, folks use that for different things, painting different areas to sit. It's not, a, it's not a bedroom, but just extra living space. Um, just some different pictures of our streets, how our streets look at night. Um, again, we try to have a really residential scale. Um, you know, how we landscape against a, a large road. Um, I've showed some sidewalks. We're proposing something slightly different here as, as there's a road curve required, but we stain our sidewalks with concrete so that they're differentiated as they are right against the side of the road. Um, just a little bit about our maintenance. Again, we charge pretty sizable rents, so we have to keep a strong maintenance to continue to get those for years, and um, so we take a lot of pride into removing snow, um, maintaining our landscaping, our trees, uh, making sure they look good inside and outside, uh, and the community feels like a, a great place to live. Uh, and additionally, with our sidewalks and our snow removal, we're very cognizant of being um, accessible. You know, all of our units, uh, we try to strive to have them on an accessible route uh, to follow FHA um, and ADA guidance. I covered most of this, but interior features, I mean, we keep up with the Joneses of apartments with granite countertops, of nice flooring, even kitchens, pantry, large walk-in closets, two washer dryer hookups uh, for people, you know, usually are coming with appliances, um, or with washer dryers. We offer stainless steel appliances. Um, you know, all of our units have a dead and then some have that extra sunroom. These are just some pictures. These are from a uh, unit in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Just the different views of bedroom, bathroom. And then I've included a slide of our site plan in case we want to uh, circle back to that. But that's the end of my presentation, just to give you a little bit of information about Redwood, because we do feel that we uh, 
have a different type of apartment when people think of apartments. They're not necessarily thinking about a redwood apartment, and um, we feel that you know we've changed people's lives and changed mine. So thank you very much for your time, uh, and happy to take questions on this or go however you want me to go. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, what I'll do is, I'll give me just a minute, I'll get feedback from you, John, if you're good, on your input, and then Sermed, and then that'll give everybody the broad picture, and then we'll go to feedback here. Thanks. You. You've already received um, their, uh, our planner and engineer feedback. I'll just let them speak to us, and then we'll, we'll come back to you. Is that good? Wonderful. Oh, great. Thank you. So I will start with John. Thank you and uh, good evening everyone. Um, so I've done a, a site plan review and, and had some comments and, and uh, things that I found um, with what we were saying. But we'll start with first the proposed use of the, the Zelda the land. Um, it's Zelda and that multiple family. Um, we actually used to be Zelda in the last master plan. Um, and now we have this uh, multi-family development that's being proposed here. Um, the site is a 19-acre site, and the um, applicant is proposing currently 108 total dwelling units um, at the site. The proposed multi-family residents are a permitted use uh, by right, and it is not a special land use or anything of that, that type of sort. Um, looking at their di uh, the dimensions within that development proposal. Um, they are compliant with all front, side, and rear yard setback requirements. Um, minimum lot area is 9,600 square feet for that area. They have a nearly 19 acre site, so they've more than surpassed the requirements there. It's the same thing with the plot width, even though there's a fly block, they meet the, the, the almost like triple, almost quadruple the minimum lot width requirements there. Um, in terms of lot coverage, they're allowed up to 35% lot coverage. What they're proposing is approximately uh, 19 to 20% lot coverage. So the below the max one there. Um, the max density that's allowed in that district is 12 dwelling units per acre. They're proposing almost six, about 5.8 dwelling units per acre. Um, now the building separation with all the structures that are on site the scheduled regulations has a minimum of 20 feet. Um, all of the building separations meet that and most uh, surpass that with like 25, 30, 40, 40 feet between uh, structures. So according to those dimensional standards, um, they are compliant with what is required for that district. Um, the one comment that we do have with regard to the setbacks um, we see that the side and side are applied to both the north and side portions of the, the parcel as they should have been. Um, the one thing that we do say is because it is um, abutting residential parcels in the north, we should say they have a slightly larger uh, setback or, uh, and then also create a larger buffer between the required buffer strip screening and then where those outdoor spaces are on uh, the back of those units just so it's not directly abiding like trees that they grow and uh, potentially encroach on some structures. Um, and the other additional thing is on the south side, that parcel abuts heavy industrial. Um, while if that site does get developed as heavy industrial, they will be required to do screening and buffering and everything else there too, so there's that. Um, and they met the, the standards that we require for that, but just uh, mindfulness that may be slightly larger than what's required standard would be appropriate um, just to enhance the, uh, the character and design of that site. Um, with regard to parking, um, this is something that uh, we'll probably touch on um, later, but in terms of like, the minimum standards for the dwelling units, um, they may be more than satisfy what the dwelling units will require. Um, they're providing two spaces in the garage as well as two spaces on each driveway. Um, and there's also guest parking uh, in and around the site that they have located there. Um, and where parking kind of ties into landscaping a little bit, there are several, there's one specific parking area that kind of faces north. While there is screening on that northern boundary, um, 
we would just suggest that maybe some additional streaming screen goes on that, that parking area, that guest parking area, just to kind of avoid head beams going into the, uh, the rear yard of the neighbors. Um, but beyond that, um, multi-family developments, and especially when you abut single family or, or uh, heavy industrial, require a buffer strip, which is a pretty like, heavy um, landscape requirement in terms of like, density of vegetation. Um, they more than meet the minimums uh, for the landscaping, and they, they're providing it all the way around um, their site. Uh, and that will just assist with screening as well as like, potential noise and other things that might be uh, part of that whole thing. Um, they also provide uh, beyond the 5% minimum for uh, site landscaping with a multi-family site on development. Um, signage. Um, I don't know if you had a moment to see the signage uh, comments that I had there, but based on what our review was, um, first the signs look aesthetically pleasing. Um, it's nice that they have the landscaping surrounding them, they have the lighting and everything else there. Uh, the one sign on Health Street is to mention at 40 square feet. Um, and the secondary sign on Roselle is 20 square feet. Um, and both are below the eight foot maximum height for monument signs, so they meet those criteria. Um, the only issue is with the 40 square foot sign, um, residential districts are not allowed to have a minor sign that exceeds 20 square feet in the sign area. So just to kind of review that and see if that can be amended. Um, and just showing the dimensions of the setbacks for those minor signs as well as those uh, clear corner standards to make sure there's no obstructions with the sign or like turning out of that area. Um, and in regard to sidewalks and circulation, we defer to uh, engineering, engineering and fire safety for that as well. But those are the extent of our comments uh, in our review. Thank you. Uh, sir, Madam Chair, thank you. Um, it, just a general note, it, if one of our notes says clarify, that is suggested in clarification. If it says a directive, provide or shall, those are required by ordinance. So the first three uh, comments, I believe, I'm sorry. Are we supposed to have something in front of us from you? Uh, there was a Should communication that I sent. Or was it separate or? Yeah. Okay, I take it here. August 31st. Thank you. Does everybody else have the email? Yeah, I have I can go, go over it really quick. Thank so you. clarify the type of uh, development. These are quick and dirty uh, comments. So they're preliminary as agreed by the by the applicant that we can provide them a laundry list of comments between you know the planner and the engineer so they can prepare for the final site plan. Um, so comment one, we, we would like to know if this is a condo association, if there's an HOA, operation maintenance, all that, extra, all those details. Um, it, we didn't see a common park or a playground area, so just clarification on that. And uh, we had a question about the leasing office, equipment storage, and I think somebody mentioned that it would be under unit three, as listed by the entrance on the east side, on the north side. So we'd like to see those identified on the site plan. Um, we'd like a typical building layout with the setbacks being shown and the you know typical driveway uh, length and the 25 foot setback from from the uh, sidewalk. Um, it just makes it cleaner and, and clearer how each building is set up with, with respect to the road and the property lines. Um, we'd like to see a road section layout with dimensions. What, what we mean by that is. You know how, how are you going to distribute the uh, the service utilities? Where is the storm? Where is the water? Where is the sanitary? And we do have some standards on that. And the reason that we list that because you're proposing the sidewalk being behind the curb, uh, that leaves all the utilities behind the sidewalk. And for the DPW to come and maintain maintain these public utilities, we have to disturb additional areas. Um, the fire truck simulation, I believe you provided one, but it was the incorrect template. 
Uh, I think your engineer is working on that. Uh, we'd like to see that. Um, there's a, there was a question for a couple of stub streets, being the length not uh, providing a turnaround or a ham hammerhead. Um, I talked to the fire chief and uh, we'd like to see those or a clarification if it's needed or not. Um, we'd like a clarification of uh, proposed street names, being a, a large loop like that. Um, you might want to consult with the uh, postmaster also, just in case they have trouble in delivering mail or if they're a central mailbox. And what's their standards on that? And I think that that's a further comment <laughs> down the list. And all landscaping must be outside the public easement. We don't want to be in the business of replacing all these landscaping if we have to. Um, the pavement with the entrance on the east side, we'd like that aligned with Delaney Street. Uh, it's shifted a little bit to the north. Um, Macomb County may require some improvements on Rosal Road. I uh, would like you guys to do some homework on that. Uh, sidewalks. This is a big item that we went back and forth with a lot of details. The village ordinance requires sidewalks on both sides. Uh, regardless if the street is private or public, major or minor or whatever. Um, what you're proposing is one side and with uh, some connectors uh, to, uh, to uh, the visitor parking. And now the way that we understand the, 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 the parking requirements and, um, and sidewalks, with the road being 20, 28 feet wide minimum, you would provide parallel parking along the street pavement. This development is proposing only 24 feet wide pavement, which is only two, two lanes, no parallel parking. So there is no street parking. Um, we think it's short, but again, it's up, it's up to the planning commission if, if uh, more, more visitor parking is, is needed at, at this point. Um, so going back to the sidewalks, um, um, on both sides of the streets, um, on Roselle and Halt, uh, along the property lines. And also, we are recommending that these public sidewalks be extended back to Main Street for connectivity. There is no sidewalk currently on Halt Street. So if any walkers or uh, uh, somebody wants to go back to the main street, there's no avenue, they have to be in the public pavement. The plans do call for a colored sidewalk. Now the village, the village maintain their own sidewalk because normally they're in the public right away. Um, this development does not uh, is, is not proposing a public right away, and it's, it's, they're proposing to be a private entirely. Um, I'm not sure how the commission feels about that. So we'd like to see some details on, on this, these colored sidewalks. <coughs> so we went through item 20. Um, they do show a pavement, but it's a, a le lesser thickness when, when it's required. Um, the village standard is 7-inch concrete over 6-inch ag aggregate for a, a residential development. Um, traffic control, and I think you mentioned something about a 15 miles per hour minimum, I uh, mean maximum speed limit. Uh, we'd like you guys to conform confirm enforcement with Macomb County Sheriff. Um, we want to make sure that it's enforceable. There are some solar uh, lighting proposed on the, on the porch, on the porches. Uh, we recommend that it be moved up front in the garage frontage for better street
street lighting because there are no street lighting being proposed for this development. Um, driveway flares, I think uh, they already agreed for that. For the driveways, just flare them at, at the end. Um, Fifty foot sidewalk is being proposed. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Fifty foot wide, <laughs> uh, main main foot through uh, for a right away and easement. Uh, the standard is 60 feet, but since the lane is 50 feet wide, I mean we don't see a problem with that and as long as the village agrees to it. There's some work on. Uh, the church property would like that turned back to your property um, unless you have an easement already with the church. Um, Main Street at Help is a two lane with no left turn. So we'd, we'd like some information about you know left turn being 108 units being proposed. There's going to be a lot of left turn uh, to access the site. There's a typo for the jurisdiction of zoning. It's the village of New Haven. Um, they provided some additional details as far as you know, manhole ramps, detention, all that stuff that does not need to be at the site plan stage. And we gave them a, a reference where the current current uh, standards and regulations are. That's all we have for a preliminary. Um, these are not con conclusive. We will go through a formal review once the planning commission agrees to the preliminary plan submittal. Okay, thank you. Dan, did you want to contribute anything? I know you didn't get your report. I wasn't sure if you had anything. Right, so can we can we turn this back to the site plan? So what Mr. Bev was talking about. Overall, um, 
I, I think you're lucky to talk to quite a few people, and uh, most of them are, are happy with living there, which was nice to hear. <laughs> um, a lot of people upset that, that you don't follow through with anything, but um, there's a few, but the majority were very, uh, very uh, happy to be there. Um, I kind of did my questioning based on the drawings, um, so I'll start. There, if that people want to follow, or, but um, the first drawing where it shows the elevations and the parcels and kind of what's already there. Um, oh, actually, I did find a point where. So, that section on the west, that's kind of a triangle space where the whole building is. All that property will be maintained by you guys created lawns, the, the trees that are there will stay, um, the odd fencing will all be removed, all that comes out, right? Yeah. I would imagine that that existing building will be taken down. It is stated on your plan that it will be removed. It didn't mention anything about the fencing. Um, yeah, it, pretty much any fencing, any structures that will come out, but any vegetation will be made. Okay, so, well, vegetation. So is it going to be lawn there, or is it going to be uh, a wild area? Probably majority lawn. I don't know if we're landscaping along the property line or just leaving it. Yeah, we're not putting any landscaping. So any existing trees, that's same. And then they will mow and won't let it get overgrown. The weeds will become bushes and all that stuff. Because it is pretty oh, yeah. shade looking. Oh, yeah. The people that are along this, that are on your property, been notified yet? Because actually, you know, you put out here where the guy's swing set is, and then I just saw those tons of stuff sitting on your property now. Have they been notified that you're coming and that uh, they got to start making other? We will be sending a letter to them. We want to have you with the planning commission first, make sure that you know, we're not getting them riled up about anything too early. But we will be sending a letter of the, the areas where they're. I mean, I'm sure some people get riled. They're used to sure. having it the way it's been. Um, I feel bad for them in that respect, but they, they kind of had a free ride for a while. You know, they knew something would come there eventually. Um, well, we'll be certain to reach out. So that, on page one, uh, are these numbers? Yep. Uh, I don't know what I see one out there. One. And I'm going to three where it shows the removal of items. Oh, demo plan. In the, right um, the demo plan is kind of those squiggly lines, and it pretty much guts every single tree that's in there currently. And there's a lot of trees in there. It would be nice to see if in your areas where you know, in between the units and that zone. If some of those trees can be saved, especially along the property line trees, um, I mean, that's all full growth trees. And it seems like it'd be better, I don't know if, what, what your thought on it is, whether you're just removing it because that's what you do, or um, it seems incredibly expensive to take out every one of those trees as well, because some of them are humongous. Um, so I'd really love to see the ability to keep the tree line, especially along the, the perimeter and in the areas where you're going to have open space anyways. And obviously it looks like you took some kind of aerials that are pretty darn uh, exact you know, right down to the tree. You know, I see the detail in the far right, or I'm sorry, the far left one with all the trees and the building and the swing set. So obviously you, there's some pictures out there that you got. There's a way to incorporate it seems like it would be advantageous for us to have a more, I don't want to use the word, oh, mature looking development versus, um, plus you could save money on cutting these things down. I don't know if that's if it's us looking that way or that's just what you do. Um, but that was, there's a lot of beautiful trees back there. I did walk in. Um, let's see, this is overall. Um, yeah, I was 
pretty surprised to see single lane, just the, the single sidewalk, since that isn't what our ordinance is. But um, your other communities do have sidewalks on both sides. So specifically Washington, it seemed like it was much quieter than what's being proposed as far as the street. And it's got sidewalks. And in Macomb, there's the easement area that's lawn um, with the street, which the least permit's concerned about as far as accessing that between the cement and between the sidewalk, if there's sewer issues or whatever comes up, um, where they need to get into that, that area. So I was concerned about that. Could you tell me about the the uh, pond that is um, is that currently uh, the grinding places of pond, or is that your proposed pond for them? Or I don't, I didn't understand the uh, dome side. Yeah, so there's an existing pond in the southwest that services dirty grinding. It is on the redwood parcel, well, to be redwood parcel. That's we're not going to touch it. We're going to give it back to them, and it will be taken off the Redwood property. The proposed Redwood Pond is on the far east side. Okay. Um, so I don't know if, if we give them that, they, they would have to amend their, their site plan, I take it, to include this new part of the property and come up to standards on that pond? That uh, no, I, th I think uh, Study of Grinding are already uh, designed their site with this pond being. Uh, on this side of the, uh, on the east side of their building. Part of the, part of the drain improvement, I think this, this is an inline pond, so th there's no issue here. Okay. They're, they're two separate ponds. Yeah, it's just not owned by them currently, right? Correct. But they built it on property they didn't own whenever they did it back when? They may have an easement on it. I didn't see one, but <laughs> yeah. I believe the property previously was on this right here. Oh, you mean the whole big parcel? Whole parcel. Yeah. yeah. You would know. I don't get paid to ask these questions. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Um, so I guess I would like to make sure that that is up to standards of whatever's got to occur for that to happen. Um, So, that is nothing on West site. I think I go on a few pages before I make my notes. Should have posted it on the front. Okay. Overall preliminary utility. utility. So, the current electrical wires that go behind the homes and is that, is that wiring the property line? Is that where that would fall, or is it in the middle of their lots where those electric utilities fall? Looks like they come into the Redwood property. So that's where, basically, under those wires is where you're going to build, that's your property up to there. So I believe, no, I, I don't think the alignment of the line follows the property line. So okay. there's a pole and one of the corners right behind that building A. Yeah. So there's a pole right here, and yeah. that kind of jogs to the church's property. But the property line goes further north than that. OK. But along the north end, that's probably pretty accurate, the, the wiring versus the um, the property line. Is that what that is, is a pole there that what you just pointed out? Yeah, so I think the pole stops here. I don't think goes this way, at least I can't see it on the survey. So it's definitely wiring. I just couldn't tell if it fell on the people's land or your land or it was the divider. Yeah, the, the overhead line does run on the Redwood parcel. Okay. Wow, some people are really going to have to change their lives. Um, so I'm looking at the, the sewers. So there's one, two, three entire units in between these storm sewers, and these storm sewers, are, I think, are going to be placed in the back of the properties. Um, and that just doesn't feel like, like anywhere near enough. 
I mean, I live in the Cora Park, and we have them every two lots, which is space them about 100 feet apart. And um, they're still flooding. Um, so it, it doesn't seem like there's enough sewers back there. So is that part of our? Yeah, we check those during the engineering calculations. Um, we make sure that you know all the all the downspots are connected, and if there are any uh, um, sump uh, 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 drains. Uh, they're going directly to the catch basins, but um, as far as uh, where these catch bas basins are, um, we'll look into the design when they submit the full engineering plans. Right now, th this is just preliminary, preliminary. Okay. so they may have more structure. It, it depends on the area and the flow. I just hope there's a whole lot more. When I look at their properties, they're very flat, where in today's standard can be great things much steeper than um, I don't know when these homes were built, um, but obviously it's quite a long time ago. So they're very flat lots. For what it's worth, I follow what Sir said. We'll get more detail. Um, okay. They do tie in all their roof down spots directly into the catch basin. So you're only getting 20 foot of green space that's going to the catch basin. So it's not like this is coming straight out of a downspout into somebody's backyard. This is going straight into the well, I guess like, part of my worry is there probably is not any sewers on the back of these people's properties. Right. You know, we've run across that in the village in the past and spent a small fortune in fixing those yep. issues in Chenault. And, um, I mean, those people suffered for a long time flooding um, before sure. it was fixed. So I, I, it's a great concern of mine that these properties are going to drain into whatever you're putting back there. Yep. Obviously, right now they drain into right. the woods. Yeah, um, we did we did notice the same thing on the north side. There's only two structures, but we don't get into these details at the site plan stage. That's that's what I yeah. It's okay. Yeah. And the note what I see. And I'd rather note it now than good catch. Question at some other time. Um, I was pretty excited when I opened up your brochure. One of my little peeves is about the ponds and a fountain in it so it looks more appealing and clean and um, so that was really cool. I, I'm glad you did that in your units. Um, so some of these, um, the ones that you covered, the metal wood and the forest and the cake wood, those are all going to be are what you're building in, in New Haven. The cake wood was the one with the um, Kind of more higher end unit where you have a green porch. Is that what that was? So uh, the cave wood unit has the sunroom, which is like a full, you know, interior wall. So it's a walled-in area. Um, so I don't know. So the, this one is a cave wood. Yeah. And then those screened-in porches were. Is that what's on to the right of the, the cake wood units on the right, the screened in porch? Is that where it goes? So, no, the screened in porches are on the, I believe, the willow wood units. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, on our willow wood units, which are. Oh, okay. Uh, and so the cake wood, that sunroom, is like a, a room in a house. It's just like an extra room. Oh, well, okay. the sunroom is got windows on three sides. It's like the bonus space in yeah. the other place. It just makes it a couple hundred square feet bigger. And I don't know, maybe that detail is not here yet either, but um, the there's a the, the divider between the port the patios that are connected, right? Yeah, we put right. some kind of privacy fencing or something so that there's a little okay. And I didn't see, because one of the things I thought was cool when looking at your website is how um, pet friendly the community is. And I spoke to someone in Washington, and I guess the amenity you're adding over there when you build the other phases of dog run, and I don't know if that's part of what maybe you were talking about, the parks or rec, I, I guess that would qualify versus a place that a dog run, right? Yeah, well, yeah, we didn't see anything. I didn't see it on the plans here, but I was told by one of uh, two, two of the people that that was what was coming to them when the second phase was built, and they were really excited about it. Okay. It's, it's an added amenity, there's a trail there. 
we don't build the dog runs anymore, but we do have in our leasing office, we will have a pet wash station. So you can wash your dog and bring it like it's like on the side of the leasing office. So that's a community amenity and people use that a lot. They don't want to wash the dogs and you know animals in the shower, but we don't do uh, the dog runs anymore for a number of reasons. One of which is um, I, I think we already have that approved in Washington, which is approved you know, several years ago. Um, but due to FHA and ADA compatibility and uh, being able to access those and a number of other reasons we don't do the dog park runs anymore. But we are very pet friendly and allow uh, pets and a lot of our residents do have pets. And those floors that you put in there, I mean, just beautiful. I mean, very dog friendly as well. <laughs> um, I didn't notice, because I did notice in, in Washington the, um, the poop stations are cool. I didn't see those notated on the plan anywhere. I'm not sure. I'll look in to see if we were proposing those or how those get proposed. Take a bag. Yeah, take a bag and a garbage. <laughs> I really, I'm really totally impressed. Thanks. They really are beautiful. Um, it's very hard to impress <laughs> Just to let you know. <laughs> <laughs> That is true. <laughs> I, I am very impressed. Um, the um, at the far right on that same page, I don't know, is that a car turnaround that's going into the, the church back end, or is that an entrance into there? I, I didn't quite understand what that was. Uh, so, as part of our negotiations with the church, pointing to Mr. Thompson here. Um, that would just be a, a vehicular as well as a pedestrian entry into the church. So we're just showing sort of stub. Uh, we, I, I guess, we have to work out if there's an easement, but we we won't. We're, I don't think we're going to be proposing to put any pavement on their site. It's just an opening so that if folks uh, living in Redwood want to attend church or vice versa, you know, that they can access um, that directly. Wow, that's really nice too. Yeah, I mean, got a church right there you can walk to. Yes. Um, the house that will be on the proposed road, um, are you great? And I see where um, you were talking about lining it up with Delaney. Um, that's going to like be right next to that guy's house. Is there any kind of proposed um, barrier to drive through his bedroom or? Um, we moved that road as far south as we could to be able to build it. We've got water main that's running in that area and there's going to be other utilities. So even trying to match up with Delaney, we thought we did the best we could without driving through that guy's bedroom. Yeah, I was concerned about it. I was looking at the picture of it and where Delaney goes and where his house is. Um, you know, one slippery ice or one drunk neighbor. We, we, Redwood's done uh, like a three rail fronts or shrubs. Um, we won't do any plannings if there's a uh, public easement there for utilities, but we have done it like a split rail place. Okay, I just like it to get addressed before that guy, you know, be protected there. Um, I think life's going to change a lot too. Um, and I know that's not really per se, I mean, that's just the way things are. That's what those people are used to. That's what they've lived with for probably some of them 30, 40 years. Um, so, your comments, but I'd like it to be as easy on them as it can be versus you know, that one rather <laughs> um, I think we're on to, okay, on the front, so A1.1, which is the exterior finishes. I didn't see the, um, it actually say, stating what the, uh, the siding the colors and things. But that's going to be like your other units where it's a multicolor kind of, so it does look like different homes. It's not all going to be brown. Yes, and we work with an architect of, you know, sort of interior designers to choose, you know, color palettes that will live a long time and not look too trendy or anything like that. So yes, just kind of like the pictures that you saw, it'll be very similar color palettes, you know, reds and tans and browns and, you know. Okay. Um, I just didn't see it specified, so I was going to ask to make sure that that's what was going yes. on yes. here as well. So, that, like you said, I thought that's kind of cool when you said, "Oh, I live in the Rebel." Mm -hmm. You know, but it, to 
be honest, when I first looked at them, I didn't realize they were six wide units. Um, it was kind of deceiving. I mean, I'm seeing the garage, but I'm like, it didn't look like it was all, all together, you know? So it was very nice, again. Um, these are just the homes. But basically on the landscape plan, I was concerned about addressing the, um, what's already there that can be incorporated in any way possible. And um, I was also, like, I don't see a sidewalk on Roselle. And I think that's something, because there is a sidewalk on Carl Street. Um, so it seems like we should connect the Roselle over there and to Main Street on help um, so these people can walk out to Main Street or to Carl Street or hopefully they'll have a nice place to go eat across the street. Um, I also thought that was really nice about your plan and the location and the way it's set up is very be very walker friendly which may also help us here in New Haven attract more to our downtown um, a large population sitting there and a way to walk to whatever we, we get in there someday. Um, and then I had two or three questions on the sheet. Um, oh, there it is. Oh, this is a sheet with that. Uh, I think you addressed most of the things I heard complaints about anyway. Streets are different. 
They're proposing to be in, be in private. They maintain the streets. They plow maintain them. the streets. They clear them. And even their colored sidewalk, which I think is a great idea. And, and you know, the, the you know, suggestion that they extend their sidewalk down to help the main, well, you know, that's something that maybe the village should look at. Because we have the ability to put in that sidewalk on that private property, that corner lot, where they may not have that ability. I mean, they may have the, the financial ability, but um, we, could, um, we could install it and there's, there's not much that the, the um, property wanted to say about that. But they would have to, you know, they would have to try to negotiate that. That's however the village pleases. But I, I guess my whole point is that, you know, I don't want us to spend time on things that we really have no control over. Okay. Okay, so the, 
And I'll just mention one other thing. Yeah, sure. We do not permit parking on the street, but sometimes we will put signs, and then our um, leasing office, they, they enforce it. So you okay. know, if people are parked on the street, they will get someone coming to their door to say you have to move your car. Okay. So for fire safety, for a myriad of reasons. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. Oh, it's okay. Um, I, I do agree with the lighting on the garages. I personally would like to see lighting, solar lighting both garages and on the homes just if we're not lighting the community so that it's more, I don't know how practical that is. That was a typo in my plan. Oh, okay. So they are on the garages. So oh, okay. I believe there was a slide that showed oh, um, their garage on it, but there's solar. Oh, okay. I think it was like a long class. Yeah, so those are garages. So the ones in the back that go into the people's backyard, are those flip out on the switch or are those dust to dawn as well? I don't know, but I can find out. That might be, I have a neighbor that doesn't turn theirs off, so the light's always in my bedroom. It takes me off. I don't like it, that's not like, I don't know if everybody per se, you know, fine, let your dog have to turn it off. So, and I guess I would like to piggyback on the effort to um, maintain any mature trees that don't, um, obviously you do a, a clearing, but I mean, if there's anything that can be salvaged. Um, open area, where is your open area again? It's in the corner. Is that your only open area on the left side? The, off of Brazil? Oh. Um, uh, so yeah, we've got, so we've got regulated wetlands. Okay. That is part of the Fifth Creek. Okay. Home County. So we, we're not touching anything in that corner. Um, and then the other open area, the common area, would be in that court area, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Just all over the lawn. Okay. And um, I will also feedback, I'm not sure where it came from, I think maybe John, uh, the, buff, the buffering, the expanded buffering um, to uh, both sides, um, considering that maybe. You know, keeping some of those trees and you know building them. Um, you, are we offering all the units here? Are all units, all your units, being offered here? They oh, will all be available rent. for rent except okay. for the leasing office. Okay. And no, I think that the floor plan, like the all floor plans. plans. Oh, yeah. um, no, we do not have all of the floor plans. We are not building a lot of the breezewood units, which I think is in the floor plan. And because we don't have any face like our like on a major road we're not offering a Hayden Woods unit here. Okay. But um Willowwood, Cape Wood, all the ones that are shown in the plans are, are here. Willowwood, Cape Wood, Meadowwood. And then Forest Is that why Chesterfield's fronts look different that are yes. facing the road as a total? Twenty three. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um and I think that's it for me. And now Richie has no job John has it. So I just uh, more so just a point of dialogue with, with Survet as well. Um, when it comes to on street parking, I'm just thinking out loud here. Um, the density of the driveways in here I think precludes a lot of on street parking in certain portions of the site of the northern set and the loop. And there's just there's not any opportunities for that. But where there isn't the density of driveways, would it be more pertinent to have, let's say, that on street parking set up in those locations with parallel, like maybe cutouts or something like that, with parallel parking in those places to be more so, like parking along the length of that section? Or do you think it would be better to have the guest parking set up how it currently is? Um, it, it's just kind of a point of, of thought, just because I'm thinking if you have a parallel along the length, that have a wide road in some portions of it, but then you'd also have parking that can service multiple units over a longer length versus more of a localized area that you guys cut up. Um, I don't know what your thoughts are on this or not. Or well, they have to demonstrate that you know they have to weigh both options and yeah. make sure which one gives you know a better yeah. number at the end or more parking. Um, but normally. The pavement is 20 feet wide with parallel, and just in case you know there's something 
in that street that prevents a fire truck from coming in. Now we only deal it, you only have 12 feet to deal with rather than another 20 feet to deal with. Um, so it, it is very tight.
upon the other communities that can have different requirements. So that's why those are that way. We understand that New Haven, the village, would like sidewalks on both sides of the street. We just wanted to offer our perspective of why we're proposing it this way. Um, and I believe in the ordinance, there is at least potential discretion for the Planning Commission to consider creative alternatives or things like that. So we wanted to present it and, and make our case. I'll circulate that memo, but I appreciate your consideration and, and hearing us and why we do it. And you know, we certainly want an accessible, walkable neighborhood. It's very important to us. That's kind of the recreation that our folks engage in is passive, you know, walking around. Uh, and um, so that's the interior sidewalks. Uh, the other item is the requirement along Roselle Road. I might have to even speak to this. Um, we have potentially some difficulties yeah. with installing a sidewalk there. So, so the constructability of that sidewalk is a nightmare. Um, one, it's a gravel road. The existing edge of pavement is about eight foot off of the right way. Um, we've got existing water main, hydrants, there's some utility poles, it's a dirt road. We were told at our original meeting that it may not even be physically possible to extend it up to Carl Street due to an existing structure almost being thin the right way. Um, and the last one is got regularly wet on the center. Again, eight foot off the edge of Roseville Road. So wherever the sidewalk goes, you're going to be barreling right through regularly wetlands, which the people involved, and they can play it out and tell you what's your reason for doing it, what's your justification. And I we've done it where we needed it for fire turnaround to regularly or to justify why we need to impact these weapons. Um, I don't know what the justification we tell legal is other than it's required as part of the site plan review. So that's where we're coming from. It's it's gonna be very difficult to install. And so yeah, I don't know if there are other alternatives that the township excuse me, the village would consider to something else in lieu of us doing that. We understand that it's important. We don't want you to have to set a precedent for us, but we at least wanted to point out the physical difficulties of actually installing a sidewalk there when there's not one to the north or the south. Um, and the other item that I'll point out, which is not shown on this um, site plan submittal, but something that we're considering, again, we will have to have reviewed by engineering and fire, is that we may consider putting, um, having the access on Roselle just be emergency access only with the gate um, so that the fire department and emergency services could access that it wouldn't be a, a vehicular connection uh, you know, at the time. Again, that'll be part of the submittal. I apologize for throwing that at you today, but it was just something we've been considering. Um, so, thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> I have a question. I, you know, I know what you're saying about the sidewalks and village has been very stringent upon that. Actually, over here in this triangle area is a uh, assisted living coming in. So the front end, uh, they're going to put sidewalks. The back side of their property, they're going to put sidewalks. Are they sidewalks that don't lead to something today? Yes. Are there wetlands there? Yes. Um, there is a stretch that will reach to that corner building if we put sidewalks on our property instead of her, that we have over there. It has been something that we may need everybody to do. It's not, so not to do it. I don't know, I would go nuts if I just made this guy do it and then said, no, maybe you guys can't, don't have to do it. I'm just saying that puts us in a precarious place when we demanded it, even in some very rough situations like wetlands, that it's, it still needed to be done. Okay. Just so I'm not, I, you know, it's not like a, we're singling you out. You know, oh, you have to do it. It's been our practice. Understood. And the ordinance. Okay, everybody good? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you all for your time. Thank you all. Thank you for coming. Of course. Dan? Yeah. Can I just have a question real quick? Are oh. these units going to be suppressed? Uh, no. no. Okay, so um, Greg will be coming. Greg will be coming back next month, working um, throughout the month with our engineering and planning and such.
to meet our requests and um, engineering and planning and fire requests as well. Um, so at this time, a motion to table. Motion to table the Redwood Living's uh, preliminary site plan review until so next week. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Um, planner's report. We have no old business, so planner's report. All good. Public comments on non-agenda items. And call from the table. Uh, motion to adjourn. So motion to adjourn at 8.21. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried.